In the 1995 Ghost in the Shell film, directed by Momoro Oshii, the Puppet Master is described as a being that became self-aware of its own existence, becoming sentient after wandering around the networks of Section 6. Though the Puppet Master is sentient, it is made apparent that he lacks the basic human processes of reproducing and dying. Though as the Major points out, the Puppet Master could copy itself as a form of self-replication, the Puppet Master is quick to state that this copy would not give rise to originality or variation. In other words, it could not become anything than what it already was, evolutionarily limited in the strictest sense. Being an immortal entity that has never been born with a human body, the Puppet Master wishes to merge with Kusanagi in order to be able at some point to 1 attain a definite finitude to its otherwise eternal existence, and two, reproduce in a way that could create a unique offspring of itself, limited not to the creation of copies. In this merger, the Puppet Master comments that a new entity will be created in their fusion. Though Kusanagi is hesitant to do so, fearing she will no longer remain herself, the Puppet Master comments that it is that very form of thinking that limits her, as all things change and undergo evolution in a dynamic system. In a sense, by retaining her individual identity, Matoko is restricting her sense of self, preventing herself from growing and developing, and thus coming to change as a person. Indeed, growing up is difficult to do, and the movie calls back to a quote from Corinthians later on to drive this point home. When Kusanagi asks why she was picked, the Puppet Master comments that they are more alike than she realizes, mirror images of each other's psyche. The Puppet Master then comments that he lies in a network beyond her experience, and that it is time to elevate their consciousness to a higher plane, and to become a part of all things. Though these comments seem cryptic, the idea of the transcendence of the psyche to thinkers like Jung stem from our ability to reunite and merge internal opposites. This merger or unity of opposites, or coincidentia oppositorum, shows how the essence of an object is established by the coexistence of two internal opposites within one entity. Much like how the major represents the finite, as she is able to die, and the puppet master represents the infinite, as he cannot die, the two opposites will merge into one alchemistic amalgamation. To better understand how unifying opposites links one with the all, we can look to the alchemistic statement, all is one and one is all. Much like the statement as above so below, the alchemistic statement one is all and all is one reflects the unification of opposites, the dissolving or breaking down of individualistic identities into a more unified or holistic perspective. For example, though we can consider all of the colors of the rainbow to be separate and distinct, when combined they become but one white light. This form of light, as symbolized by the sun, to quote the puppet master, is the blinding brightness that conceals a source of great power. In Hegelian dialectics, the two entities of both the major, representing a thesis, and puppet master, her other or opposite, representing antithesis, are combined in a form of synthesis, destroying their separate sense of self in the process. Much like how gray is neither black or white, but is also a combination of both, or how a chemical compound is made of two distinct elements without being individually either, Matoko and the Puppet Master are now an entirely new and separate entity, created by their current conjunction. Though the standalone complex series would continue to run on with this concept in the form of the vanishing mediator, the mediating of opposites in the Hegelian sense is attained through a solidification or merger of the two ideas all the same. After this merger in Bateau's safe house, when Bateau asks Matoko if the puppet master is still with her, she quotes Corinthian chapter 13 verse 11, using the quote to note that much like a man who has no more use for childish things, she has no more use for former self, as she has now evolved into an entirely new entity, commenting that she is now neither the major nor the puppet master. From previously being like a child who didn't initially want to change, Matoko has now grown and developed and evolved into an adult. Much like how an egg becomes a baby chick, or how a caterpillar metamorphoses into a butterfly, the major has since discarded her previous shell, becoming, as Deleuze and Guattari would state, something entirely other from what she previously was, symbolized now by her new childish body. When Matoko wakes up in Bateau's safe house, she is given a new body, that of a child. Though Bateau says it was the only body he could find for her on the black market, the childish body symbolizes the birth of a new being that came about by Kusanagi and the Puppet Master's merger, fulfilling the Puppet Master's want of reproducing outside of copies.
Much in the same way that a child is an offspring of both the mother and father, but which is also neither one, Kusanagi's new shell symbolizes her birth, or potential rebirth from her previous shell's death or destruction, as a new being. Kusanagi even refers to herself as a newborn, asking where does the newborn go from here, when looking over the city in the final scene, noting its infinite vastness, which she seems more than confident to seek and explore in order to further her psychic sense of collective understanding.